Today I'm taking your questions. I got some questions about my new laptop I'll address, some questions about filters, more questions about case filters. I'll expound on why I think the most innovative, fun, and easy to use brand out there. And I'll talk about some gloves that are really nice to use for shooting in cold weather that are touchscreen capable. Well, hey everyone, Hudson here. Bunch of fun stuff today, tackling some of your questions. Some about gear, some about just staying comfortable shooting in cold weather, uh, some other stuff about computers. So we'll dive into that. Just a few quick announcements. One is that my Milky Way course uh, on shooting night sky and the Milky Way is just about done. It should be launched, if not when this video is up, very shortly thereafter. Keep an eye out for that and I'll be emailing about it. You can find out more about that on my website, HudsonHenry.com. While you're there, you can check out all the gear that I use, HudsonHenry.com slash ATS links. I keep an updated list of all the gear that I use there. When I switch something out or something stops meeting my requirements, I swap it out there. So that's always updated. Those gear links help me out and I really appreciate you're using those. Um, also over at HudsonHenry.com slash office hours, make sure you sign up for our next big free photography gathering get together. Uh, we're gonna be going through images that you submit. I'm inviting everyone to submit one image. We'll run through those in sort of a critique group cheerleading session, looking at what everybody has to see. These galleries always blow my mind. We have an awesome group of photographers participating in office hours, all learning from each other. So you can sign up for that at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. It's gonna be a little while till the next one. You've got time to get that image together and submit it. We're really hoping for night sky images, given the, uh, the night sky course that's just coming out and some focus I've had on Milky Way and star photography. But any image will do. So you can sign up for that at hudsonhenry.com slash office hours. Choose whether you're gonna watch it on YouTube Live or Zoom, participate in the Zoom meeting. Uh, and you can leave a question there while you're at it. We really appreciate those questions. Again, you know, your comments on the YouTube channel, emails to me, questions in the office hour submissions really drives the content of this channel. And I appreciate everyone being a part of this Approach in the Scene community, liking the videos, subscribing, sharing with friends. It makes a huge, huge difference. And I really appreciate it. And, and you all using my links. It just supports what I do. All right, let's tackle the easy one first. People have been asking me, Am I still enjoying my new Dell laptop, having switched over from a MacBook Pro, you know, kind of top spec 15 inch MacBook Pro from yesteryear? And yes, the answer is I am loving it. I love having the touch screen more and more and more. Um, the speed of the i9900 11th gen processor is ridiculous paired with the NVIDIA 3050 card. Um, and I actually just opened the thing up and put a secondary NVMe M.2 drive in it, a very, very fast, like uh, one of the fastest, the Samsung 980 uh, NVMe drive in there, a two terabyte drive just for data. So I don't have to connect as many external drives. So I'm out on workshops, I can just put information on there and it, it just gives me an expanded storage space. And when I opened it up, I realized, you know, all the, the firewire, the, the, the uh, Thunderbolt three ports and, and USB ports and card reader ports are all screwed in and, and jumpered onto the motherboard so that if something happened and a cable got pulled or something, you can just take the back off the computer, take two screws out, order the new part from Dell and stick a brand new SSD or a brand new um, Thunderbolt port in there. I just, I love how modular and user serviceable it is. Now, the one complaint I'll have is that they didn't put a little screw or a heat sink for the new NVMe drive. I bought the drive, opened it up, and there was no screw to lock it to the board and no heat sink to put it in. So I had to order those separately from Amazon. It was a total of less than $20. It took me about 10 minutes to put together, but you know that would have been one nice thing for them to put in there. I think they expect you're going to send it in to them and they'll, they'll supply all that stuff. But there you go. All right, second easy question before we jump into filters is about... Shooting in cold weather, you know, you can, you can get a nice warm beanie. You can wear, you know, a Patagonia puffy coat with a hood. You can get, you know, good pants from Outdoor Research or Patagonia or North Face that, that you know, wick moisture and are warm and windproof. The problem is your hands when you're out working with your camera. And, you know, over the years I've done several things. If it's extreme cold conditions, you got to have a big down glove or mitten. 
And I often find that if I'm not needing a lot of finger dexterity, I'll use a big over mitten with a thinner glove underneath that I can work with. You know, in extreme cold conditions, I'll actually double these up in a really oversized down mitten. And I can pull these out, and they're touch screen capable, and they have the dexterity to let me hit menus and scroll through, do all the things I need to do, hit the AF on. I mean, I have pretty good finger dexterity in these. These are outdoor research, um, touch tech, wind stopper fleece gloves. And they have a leatherette palm, they aren't completely waterproof, but they stay relatively warm when they're wet. The great thing about them is they're touch screen capable, so I can position a focus point or work with my phone without taking my gloves off. They're lightweight. They're not horribly expensive. They last and last, and they're warm enough. You know, it's better than not having a glove on. Most of the year, these are all I have in my bag. These and my little Patagonia beanie are just kind of tucked in my camera bag in case it's chilly. I'm gonna put a link to these gloves. They sell them on Amazon. Great company, Outdoor Research out of Seattle. Uh, they've been making gloves for, gosh, I don't know, since I've been climbing, 35 years, something like that. So, I highly recommend them. They're great. I'm gonna put a link in this video's description. There's also a link on my ATS Links page on my website. All right, so I've had a lot of people asking about case filters. You know, I see you're going, you know, case, why case? I gotta just say, after running this workshop in Brookings and really using these filters in a frenetic environment, teaching students, working on some of my own images at the same time as helping others with their cameras and scouting and running around, moving quickly, multitasking in my head, the ease of use and simplicity of these filters just blows my mind. You know, and I've done videos about the image quality and about ease of use before, but I've just got to say, the filters that I'm using, these 112 millimeter filters, I just adore. I'm gonna hit one more time on the ease of use because you know, if, for example, you're a Nikon shooter with the Z system, you can literally just pull this lens cap off your 14 to 24 and put this HB97 hood on it. If you don't have the 14 to 24, you can buy the HB97 hood separately. I have that on my links page. And this hood is a 112 millimeter filter mount. Fits right on that ultra wide 14 to 24. It also fits on the 14 to 30 f4. It also fits on the 51.4 lens. It also fits on the 70 to 200 lens. It also fits on the 24 to 72 8 lens. It's clear they're committed to using this hood with their top big glass. And then it's as easy. You drop a case 112 millimeter magnetic adapter ring into this filter hood. I just leave it there. It's always on. And whenever I want to filter, you know, let's say on this workshop, I was shooting on a boat in the fog. It was rocking around. I'm moving around the deck. I don't want to bump my lens into something when the boat rolls and damage the front element of my lens. You know, I, I don't want salt spray to get on the front element of my lens. Well, I just pull my UV filter out. Same thing when I was shooting kiteboarding on this trip and click, it's on and I'm protected. That front element's protected. You know, it's not a cheap filter, this 112 millimeter UV, but it's a lot cheaper than getting my lens's front element repaired. And the hood itself provides a little bit of protection as well. All of a sudden, you know, I'm out in a spectacular landscape with wave action and I want to slow the water down a little bit. I keep these 112 millimeter filters of mine in this little case here. I've also got a set of 82 millimeters, but I love the 112s. I just don't worry about vignetting, stacking them on any of the glass that I have. And, you know, I literally, I've got my neutral night filter for doing star work, which I tested with and without this filter. It adds a slight blue cast, which I kind of like a slight blue cast in Milky Way. All of the neutral night filters do that. It's, it's a byproduct of filtering that particular spectrum of light that the night filters do. You can adjust for it in white balance. You're shooting raw anyway. It doesn't really matter. But the effect without touching a slider without the filter and with the filter is really dramatic. You just get more contrast. You get a darker interstitial space between the skies. The Milky Way's gas cloud stands out more. You know, even if there's not a lot of light pollution out in a beautiful place, it makes a huge difference. If there's light pollution, it cuts through so much of it. And then I keep my 10 stop, six stop, three stop neutral density filters in here. Circular polarizer, which is thin as can be. It's just a single ring because it spins on the magnet. And my UV filter. When I want to swap out and suddenly blur water, you know, I was on a coast, there's lots of water moving through, suddenly, boom, I've got a three-stop neutral density. I don't like three stops. I could take it off, 
slap on a six or a 10. It's just as easy as click, click, no threading, no cross threading, and the image quality is just great. If I'm using a lens that doesn't take this HB97 hit, you know, let's say I'm working with my 105 millimeter macro. There was this foggy night down on the beach. I decided I'd just go down. I wouldn't even take much gear, just my 105 millimeter macro and a tripod. Well, you know, I have a 62 to 82 millimeter standard adapter ring here, and I have a 82 to 112 ring. I went down there and I saw some scenes that looked like they'd be fun to kind of blur the water moving through, and I slapped on this lens. Let's just switch it out real quick here. 14 to 24 is off. My 105 28Z macro lens is on. It's a 62 millimeter filter thread. Well, you know, no problem slapping my 10 stop neutral density filter out in front, boom, on the tripod. I suddenly was blurring wave action in the middle of the foggy day down to 30 seconds at a nice high quality aperture. So just so easy to use. You can stack without fear of vignetting with this big a filter. And I can adapt it to just about anything. If I want to work with my 500, you know, it's as simple as grabbing the 95 to 112 millimeter adapter ring. There was one night where from this big beautiful house that we rented right on the coast there in Brookings on a bluff, I was looking down at the, this, the rocks out in the surf and the waves playing through them and I thought, hmm, with my 500, I can make an interesting scene of that rock with the waves washing over it. Boom, put some neutral density on the 500. That's not something I could do with a smaller filter since this is a 95 millimeter filter thread. You just put that magnetic adapter ring, slap, easy as, as that. It's just a wonderful system and the more I use it, the more I love it because of its simplicity. You have a lens that doesn't fit the hood with its own built-in cap. The HB97 Nikon hood has its own cap that comes with in the uh, 14 to 24s package or you can buy separately. Well, you got the case magnetic cap, which is just enough less magnetic than the filter that it's easy to pull off without pulling the filter off. You know, let's say you want to ha carry one extra filter with you and go really light. You can buy a set of stack caps and keep that filter sandwiched between two of the stack caps in your pocket to just run around. You can keep a couple filters sandwiched that way. It's just such a fun system to use. And then, you know, people that said to me, what about the, the case sensor box filters? Those are cheaper. Well, they are cheaper, but they're a little tougher. You got to get a little suction cup out. You pop this out. You take your lens off. You put it in the mirror box. Um, I have some of them I've experimented with. Image quality is great. They are more affordable, but you're opening up your camera, and sometimes there's situations where you don't really want to do that. You know, one that I could see using is the neutral night filter. If you know you're going out to shoot Milky Way, and that's really your only objective, it doesn't really do much harm to put a neutral night filter in the mirror box. Images that you shoot that aren't of the Milky Way might have a little bit of a bluish cast, but you should be able to white balance that out. Um, I don't sell it. You know, the, my choice is to sell 82 millimeter filters and 112 millimeter filters. I think if you're in the Nikon ecosystem, 112 is a no-brainer. If you like lenses that are, you know, some of the big Zeiss lenses and some of the lenses that are coming out from other brands may take a look at Nikon and start building a bigger filter thread system. You're not going to go wrong with 112. It's not something that you're going to have to take back in return because suddenly you bought a lens that won't work with it. I think that if you have lenses right now where your biggest thread is 77 and you say, why are you selling 77 millimeter filters? It's because of a lesson I learned long ago. I had a complete set of 77 millimeter filters that I loved. I had spent a lot of money and investment and time. This is probably 10 years ago. And then I, all of a sudden, I fell in love with a lens with an 82 millimeter filter thread. Eventually, one's going to come along that you love that's at least 82 millimeters. It's wide angle, it's a long lens, whichever. And you're going to be sad that your filters don't work with it. And eventually, you're going to sell all the 77 millimeter filters for less than half of what you paid for them and invest in 82 millimeter filters. So, I'm encouraging you, if you're buying new filters, to take that jump and do it now, just so that you future-proof yourself. Plus, if you're working with a smaller filter thread lens, going with that bigger adapted filter in front, you can stack a polarizer and a neutral density filter and not worry about vignetting because you're close to the limit of your lens. All right, so one final question about filters that's on a completely related track to that 82-112 question is, what about hoods? You know, you've got your, your 105 millimeter 
S macro lens, right? Or your lens that you've adapted way out to take the, the big 112 filter. How are you gonna put its little hood on there? Well, I'm not. Uh, and, and that's you know just a basic fact with using filters in general. I find that hoods make it more complicated with the noted exception of our Nikon HB97 hood, which is made to take filters and work with multiple different lenses. You know, it's a question I asked long, long time ago when I was d doing some learning with Art Wolf, and his comment was that the first thing he does when he gets a lens, at least this is what he said back in the day, was, you know, waste can the, the hood. It takes room in his bag. If he's in a situation where he actually needs to shade his lens, you know, there's a million things he could do it with. You know, get a magazine, get a piece of paper, have someone else hold a coat while he's shooting. Uh, you can, you know, what they call in Hollywood, flagging. Um, you're just kind of blocking that source of light that's just outside the frame. Because really, that's the only optical thing that a hood helps with. It's that situation, it's much more of a studio problem than a natural photography problem where, you know, you've got the sun just outside the frame and it's streaking light in diagonally that causes flare and ghosting in your image. And, you know, let's face it, our latest lenses are better and better and better at handling backlight without flare and ghosting. There are the certain situations where lens flare is a problem. And, you know, I've found myself shooting like, like this, blocking the sun, having someone else hold something, getting a tree in between. You know, there's multiple things to do. The main reason that I consider using a hood these days is to protect the front of my lens in a rough situation. Same thing as a UV filter. It's to keep me from bumping it into something or it's to keep rain from hitting it, shooting a waterfall in a wet wilderness. Um, you know, it, it can be really handy, but when I go to use filters, I generally find it impedes my ability to switch them or turn them and I pull them off anyway. They, they sort of live in my bag. So, you know, the fact that I'm having an adapter to upsize I mean, the odds of me ever really needing to work with a filter in the hood at the same time are infinitesimal in my mind. You know, a filter is a thing I throw on for a specific use scenario. Now, it might be that you have a knockaround lens, like my 24 to 70 f4 Nikon Z lens is kind of a knockaround lens for me. It's 72 millimeters. I have a polarizer and a UV filter in 72 millimeters just because that lens is on my camera all the time, bouncing around on my side, hiking or in the city. And it's nice to have a filter that just fits that. And the only ones I really would need that in are 72 uh, and, and UV, because those are the only ones I would use when I'm not on the tripod. If I'm using neutral density, I'm gonna be on a tripod. If I'm using a neutral night filter, I'm gonna be on a tripod. By the time I get on a tripod, you know, I don't really need a hood to protect myself from bouncing into things. Uh, I can use an umbrella to block rain. There's lots of different options out there. So. For me, you know, I often have hoods in my bag in the car and not in my bag that goes out in the field with me just because of space. You know, if I've got an option to take a warm hat and gloves, some extra filters, my move shoot move system in a, in a tripod head or the filters, the filters are going to stay in the car. You know, they're, they're a little bit superfluous. They can be handy at times. I'm not quite with Art Wolf about throwing them in the trash can, but, uh, but if I'm using filters, I'm rarely using hoods. So it doesn't really work out to be much of a problem for me. Okay, so that's it for this week. I'm gearing up for the big national parks extravaganza. Amazing group of people coming along. If some of you are in that group, I can't wait to see you. Uh, we're going to have a ton of fun. We're going to be shooting in some of my most favorite photo locations on the planet. Yellowstone, the Tetons, Moab, um, and you know, I'll see you all well next week in approaching the scene. I'll have some approaching the scenes while I'm gone. Uh, but we'll do those office hours when I get back October 26th, submit your images, sign up at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links, check out all my gear at hudsonhenry.com slash ATS links and the case filters at hudsonhenry slash case. There's much more of an explainer video there. Um, and I appreciate all of you using my links and supporting the channel so much. So. I know it's a little bit of a weird time right now with uh, the Delta variant raging around out there. Everybody, please stay safe and find ways to be creative uh, and have fun in your life at the same time. Don't let work and stress overwhelm you. Stay creative, stay safe, and we'll see you next week.